Hello everyone and welcome to this eCognition Deconstructed video. Today we're gonna look at the unsupervised classification algorithm. This algorithm performs an unsupervised classification and the result of that classification does not lead to the creation of an image object level and classified objects, but instead it creates an image layer where the values correspond to a cluster ID. That means if you end up with eight classes, you're gonna have a pixel range between one and eight. One means this pixel belongs to cluster one, eight, it belongs to cluster eight, and a cluster represents a class. So the advantage is here that, again, you don't have to select samples to apply a classification. You also don't need to know the number of classes you wanna have. The algorithm does it on its own and it splits and merges cluster in an iterative manner. You can define the iterations. Again, the final result is a layer with pixel values corresponding to the cluster ID and therefore the class. So this cluster analysis actually is very well suited for segmentation as well. If you use it in combination with, for example, the multi-threshold segmentation. That is actually something I'm gonna show you here in this video. So running this cluster analysis also helps to understand your region better. So if you have no idea about the region you're looking at, it really helps to understand where certain features are and it might help you to demystify your data set. Let's have a look at a few parameters of this algorithm. First of all, input image layers. You can run it on one layer, you can run it on multiple layers. Just make sure that the layers have some information that are valuable to this algorithm. Output layer name, simply define the name. It's gonna create a temporary layer and add it to your project, a raster layer. Then number of iterations, define how often the algorithm is allowed to iterate. Then maximum number of clusters, that's the maximum number of classes, of output classes that this algorithm uh, generates. The initial number of clusters defines the number of clusters it starts with. This is lower than the maximum numbers of clusters, so it has to be. Minimum cluster size defines the minimum number of pixels that a cluster has to have. Maximum standard deviation, by default it's set to zero, which means that splitting is allowed always, so each iteration is allowed to split clusters. If you define a value here, for example 10, then it only will execute a splitting if the cluster exceeds this value. Last but not least, the minimum cluster distance. So you can define a minimum distance and if clusters are closer to each other as the defined distance, they're gonna be merged. And zero means a threshold is ignored and that's the default setting as well. So how does it look like in theory? Let's have a look. Here we see a 2D feature plot, feature one, feature two, it doesn't matter actually and you see the data points that are distributed in this plot. And this algorithm actually finds these clusters and classifies those and assigns uh, values to those clusters. So in this case, we would have three clusters. And again, this happens in an iterative manner. So it starts with randomly placing cluster centers in the feature space, and then the pixels are assigned based on the shortest distance to the center of a cluster. Afterwards, it checks the standard deviation and the distance between clusters, and then based on the settings, it splits a cluster or it merges clusters. And also, if a cluster is smaller than your defined minimum cluster size, it's gonna be merged into a neighboring cluster. The advantage of this algorithm is that you actually don't need to know much about your data, right? So you, you run it and you get a result. Uh, there's very little user effort required and it is uh, very effective at identifying spectral clusters in your data. Let's stop here with the theory and let's have a look at the cognition itself and how it looks like in eCognition. Okay, so please open eCognition Developer. I'm gonna X this information window out and simply use drag and drop of the provided data set into eCognition Developer. Here you see the image, it's a subset with three layers. I'm quickly gonna change the equalization so we have a bit more contrast. And what we wanna do is use unsupervised classification. 
So I'm right clicking into the process tree using add new process and I'm looking for the unsupervised classification. Here are all the parameters that I discussed before. Input image layers is important. You can use one, you can use all of your layers. Uh, make sure you're using layers that make sense and that help uh, discriminate different features that you see in the image. Output layer name, that's gonna be our unsupervised uh, classification layer. And these are the default settings, number of iter iterations 20, maximum number of clusters 10. So the maximum classes you get is 10 out of these settings and the minimum is eight because that's the initial number of clusters. Minimum cluster size is 50, so at least you have to have at least 50 pixels to be a cluster, otherwise you're gonna be merged into uh, another cluster. Maximum standard deviation is set to zero. Um, if you increase that value, splitting only occurs of a cluster if it exceeds this maximum standard deviation. If you leave it default, it always uh, is allowed to split. Minimum cluster distance, uh, that's between the cluster centers. Um, and that is used as a merging criteria for clusters. And again, zero in this case means it is ignored. Let's uh, just go for the default settings and execute this one. In this case, if you're only looking for water, non-water, I wouldn't go for eight classes, I would simply go for two or three and see if that separates nicely. Also, it makes sense to maybe compute index layers beforehand and feed them into this algorithm, right? So the NDVI, for example, NDWI and so on. We have an algorithm for this called index layer calculation. Check it out. You can compute those beforehand and then include them in the unsupervised classification. You're gonna get better results. Let's split the view for a second and display our output at the bottom. Um, let's use the swipe view, right? So you have at the bottom our output of the unsupervised classifier. Let's quickly try to reduce the number and see what, what's changing. So if you have, if you want to have less classes, uh, let's decrease the initial number of clusters to two. So it starts with two random clusters and the maximum should be five. Um, execute this and then the output should change. So we have five classes, one, two, three, four, and five. But that's just pixel information, right? So you might wonder how do I get classes or how do I get image objects classified based on this unsupervised classification output layer. It can be simple. I'm gonna go back because I like the previous classification better. Okay, uh, how to get this into the image object world so you can use object-based image analysis. Uh, one approach would be to simply use the multi-threshold segmentation. Let's look for this one, multi-threshold segmentation. And here you define as image layer our layer USC. And right, you can define thresholds. So we have to define our threshold is one, two, and that's gonna split at these thresholds into different classes. Six, seven, oh, we have quite a lot. I might fast forward um, and, you know, and it puts it into those classes unclassified. Um, we have an easy way instead of creating all these classes manually, you actually can use, how's it called? Update. Ah, here, create update class. If you leave the default settings, it creates automatically a class name and it randomly assigns a color to it. I'm gonna, number of cycles, I'm gonna loop it 11 times. So it should create 11 classes as you see here with random colors. And now I'm gonna use them in here. So class one is this one. Let's run this one. And we do now have created an image object level that you see here with image objects. 
that are split based on our thresholds and the values of our output USC layer. And that would be our classification based on the unsupervised classification algorithm. So we are not done yet uh, because I really want to, I actually want to reclassify my classes because now they're representing the cluster ID, which is to me not very meaningful if I want to create a land cover classification. Let's display the outline of our objects. And you might have noticed that we have multiple objects, for example, uh, in water. And also those are different classes or different clusters. What I want to do is reclassify those that represent water into a class water, uh, those that represent vegetation into vegetation, those that represent non-vegetation in non-vegetation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a sign class and first of all I am creating those classes. Just illustrating the workflow and now I need to check which class here which are representing my IDs are representing those classes. So let's start with water. And I'm simply going to uncheck all my classes that are displayed and I'm going to go through the list and check which one represents water. So I start with water. Class 2 is water. 3 as well. 4 as well. 5 is not. 6 is not. 7, nope. 9, yes. 10, yes, so it's 9. That's water. And 11. All right, so 11 is a bit of a fuzzy class, I guess. Um, yeah, but all those belong to water. So I'm going to use simply a sign class and assign those objects that are classified as one of those classes into the class water. So I use a sign class, class filter. I'm going to need to check class 2, 3, 4. 9, 10, 11, 9, 10, 11, okay. If they're classified as those, put it into the class water and execute. Sweet. That looks good. We do have some, I guess, misclassified objects here in shadow areas, but afterwards we can take care of this using object-based image analysis functionalities. It's going to be fairly easy and straightforward. Let's check the rest. So we do have class 5. This looks like non-vegetation. Class 6, also non-vegetation. And 7 looks like vegetation. So uh, you simply can copy and paste it actually. Control C and V. And I'm going to change the class. So 5, 6 were non-vegetation. And then, last but not least, least is the class 7. The leftover is vegetation. Okay, that would be now the result of this reclassification. What I didn't mention yet is that you can limit also the cluster analysis, so the unsupervised classification on certain classes. I'm going to show you that in a second. So first of all, I'm going to merge and clean it up my my image object level i'm gonna merge non blah, blah, blah. those by class okay thematic layers that should do the trick and now we should have one outline instead of uh, multiple outlines and also the river should be oh, that looks awesome huh better than expected okay cool and um now we could simply start using object-based image analysis and neighborhood properties, um, context information to improve our classification. I'm not gonna go into detail here, but uh, the, the small objects here, they annoy me. So I'm simply gonna remove those. I'm gonna use remove objects and simply gonna remove objects that are smaller than a certain area extend area so everything that's smaller than let's go 25 pixels resolve it into the neighboring object where it's most similar to spectrally um, and i'm using layer one two and three okay nice now we should run merge again 
because we have created uh, certain boundaries here execute there we go what we could do now in a second step is for example check ah we have here this what is it oh, outline doesn't depict it that well so non-vegetation let's try to do a unsupervised classification only in the non-vegetation area so i'm simply going to copy and paste again this from top here this unsupervised classification here to the bottom and instead of pixel level i'm now choosing image object level and set it to my non-vegetation class and you can run the same again so um i'm not going to change a lot here i'm going to override my uh, usc layer oh i'm not uh usc non vegetation layer so you see the difference okay let's run this one and this is only computing the unsupervised or applying the unsupervised classification within my class non-vegetation so this can be particularly helpful if you're looking at transitions right if you run this unsupervised classification in transition areas like the coastline uh, in the beach regions for example and improve that area based on the unsupervised class analysis you also could use it then afterwards to grow objects into certain classes or clusters on a pixel basis and improve your outlines right okay let's check this new layer here so this should have only created information in my unclassified right so uncheck the outlines so we have zero values in areas that were not classified as non-vegetation and it only did it in the vegetation non-vegetation class right so we again have multiple classes here in the non-vegetation class now you could again simply loop that thing um gonna copy and paste the multi-threshold and now we're gonna do the multi-threshold in the non-vegetation and we're not using the usc layer we're going to use the usc non-vegetation layer and let's go and now that does a sub segmentation of our non-vegetation class and actually it now looks like this let's undisplay let's display everything and now uncheck vegetation and water so we didn't do it in here but now we do have a finer classification and segmentation within our non-vegetation class so you get more details quickly gonna split it so you actually see that you see more <laughs> in the uh, unsupervised classification result than i or me personally i see in the image so for me all this area here looks more or less the same but the statistics reveal that there is more information also these small tiny patches of maybe salt area so that's very nice actually it really reveals more information that you are able to see with your eyes or at least i can see with my eyes um, and that also helps you to understand your image better okay so i'm gonna leave it at that um check out the knowledge base because we do have another uh, project and a rule set regarding unsupervised classification which is more sophisticated than this approach gives you a bit, bit more examples and explains it a bit more uh, and you can see how it can be used in your daily routines. Okay, so thank you very much for watching and see you next time.